Hello, my name is Rob Garner. I'm an instructor at CNM, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to use loops in C++. So we'll open up Visual Studio, create a new project, I'm going to call it Loop Demo. Save it on the desktop and it's a C++ empty project. Once the project is created, I'm going to right click on the project, go to properties, the linker, system and select the console subsystem so that the console will remain open when I run without debugging. Next I'm going to add a new item to my source files and I'm going to add a CPP file which I'm going to call loop demo again. Once loop demo opens, I'm going to enter some of the standard things we put in a C++ file. I'm going to include the IO stream so I can get input and output. I'm going to use the standard namespace. Put some comments in to explain what this program is. and define my main function which is the first function on the operating system will run when it executes my program and I'll return zero at the end of my program to my main function in order to tell the operating system that everything returned OK. The first loop we're going to demonstrate is a for loop and with a for loop we use a keyword for and then in parentheses we do we put three things first is we declare a variable a loop variable which in this case we're going to call i and we're going to initialize it to zero then we have a loop condition which will be i is less than 10 so this loop will continue while i is less than 10 and then at the end of the the execution of the code for that loop what we're going to do is increment i And to show what this does, I'm going to uh, display a hello world message. And so we can see what the loop variable is, I'll display it in the message. I'm going to hit Control F5 to run this program. and when it runs we can see that this loop ran this code 10 times and each time it printed out i we can see that i started off as 0 and while i was less than 10 it executed the code and when we can tell that the increment happened after the code in this block was executed so that's why it starts with the 0 and we can see that when i became 10 it didn't execute it actually broke out of the block and that's why we only see i going up to 9. Note, however, that we have 10 elements being displayed. So that's how a loop works. We can see this operate a little bit more directly if you run in debug mode. So I'm going to set a breakpoint and then start debugging. And if we put these side by side, and each time we'll hit 
step over, we can see that when we went got to the for loop, i was declared. It starts off without a good value. And then we'll, we'll keep hitting debug and step over. And now we see that i was initialized to 0, and it's in the loop. And I'll hit F10 again. And we can see that now it displays the C out is executed. I is displayed as zero. I is still zero. And then when I hit debug, step over again, it jumps back up into the for loop. Hit debug again. And now we see that the increment operation was conducted. We're now at the next output and now we can see that one was displayed. So this will continue on and we could keep looping through and you would see how i gets incremented each time. I'm going to hit continue to let it complete its run and it displayed all 10 then terminated. The next loop we're going to look at is called a while loop. So I'm going to replace this code and I'm going to create an int we're going to call repeat. And I'm going to ask the user how many times they want to repeat this loop. So in this loop, the way it's structured is we notice, so notice that we have a while is the keyword. And in the parentheses, we give a condition. So while repeat is greater than zero, we're going to see out this is iteration, and it's going to display repeat. Notice that I put a decrement operator. And in this case, it's a pre-decrement operator. So it's going to decrement and first and then show repeat. So this is actually going to count down and we'll run it with control F5 and so we'll uh, it asks us how many iterations we want to do let's say 10 iterations and we can see that it counts down all the way to 0 and then finishes so each while loop what it's doing is it says this is iteration and a pre-decrement, so since I put in 10, repeat is 1 is subtracted, so it displays it as 9. Then it goes back around. 9 is still greater than 0, so then it does iteration, the next iteration, so pre-decrements 9 to 8, it displays 8, and then just keeps running through until it's done. Again, it's useful to use this breakpoint, and we'll run in debug mode. And we can see repeat is declared. It's got this indeterminate value because it hasn't been initialized yet. But again, I'll step over, step over again. And the C out asks me, please enter a whole number. I'll put in six this time. And we see that now, I, when I entered 6, it now went into repeat. I'll step over again. And I'll keep stepping over, and we see it shows the first iteration. You see the repeat is 5 because of this predecrement. So it started off as 6, and as soon as it executed this, it changed it to 5, and that's what gets displayed. The next step 
when it gets to the end of this block it jumps back to while repeat is 5 5 is indeed greater than 0 so it will do another one currently repeat is 5 but when I do the next display it executes this decrement operation first then it displays this iteration as 4. It's the bottom and then goes back up. So this will loop through and display all of the values. Another interesting thing to do when we run this program is enter the number 0. If I enter 0, we notice that with the while loop it doesn't do anything because as soon as it gets down to the the first thing it does with a while loop is evaluate the condition. Since 0 is, gra is not greater than 0, it's going to not execute uh, the block. Which brings up the next type of loop. The next type of loop we're going to do is called a do loop. And a do loop is similar to while loop except that we put the keyword do at the front and then we put while at the bottom. And it finishes with a semicolon too. So here it looks very similar to what we had before. And in fact if we run this and we put in say 10 we get the same results. So there's no difference at this point. Where you get a big difference is if I run this and enter 0, it says this is iteration minus 1. The difference with a do loop is that a do loop will always execute the code inside of it at least one time. And so it takes 0 in, decrements 0, and displays it as minus 1. And however, and so if you're just doing iterations, probably a while loop might make more sense. However, do loops are very useful when what we want to do is ask the user if they want to do another iteration of the program. And so if I declare a string called another, and I initialize repeat to 0. What I can do is I'm going to display repeat but I'm going to increment it instead so that each loop it shows it'll show it'll increase in value and then I'm going to ask the user at the end if they want to do another iteration. Whenever you do this, always make sure the user knows what out what form you want the input. So I'm going to ask them to say yes or no. And I'm going to use the get line command. And get line isn't available because I didn't include the string, so I'm going to include the string library. And my condition now is going to be while another equals yes. Notice that we use a double equal signs. That's because we're actually using the equivalence operator, not using the assignment operator. If I put another and use equal yes, it'll actually assign yes into another. It's not what we want to do. What we want to do is compare another to the value of yes, and if they're both equal, that will return true. And so this will keep looping through until the user says something other than yes. So let's run it.
So this is iteration one. Another, I type in yes. It tells me it's iteration two. And every time I put an iteration, it'll increment the iteration and display it. If I say no, it ends and asks me to press any key to continue. So this is a very useful structure. In fact, often what you'll have is is you have this structure. And so you'll put in whatever code you have here that you want to process and then you'll ask the user if they want to do another and it'll keep looping through. And So this is a common way to structure a console program. This completes uh, this demonstration. Thank you very much.